How's it going, everyone? We've got a guest with us today. Our guest is Curtis. How are you this afternoon? I'm doing wonderful, brother. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. Thank you for asking. Good. So how long have you been practicing for? Oh, 30 years. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. On and, and off. On, on and, and off. off. Okay. And was there anything uh, specific that contributed to those those breaks in time? Yeah. Um, when I first moved to Amarillo, Texas, it was around 2010, I opened up a martial arts school. Okay. And that's actually when I dove head first into the occult. But before mm -hmm. that, I was more of a dabbler looking for truth. I came up in the Eastern warrior traditions Okay. and I love the martial arts, but I was fascinated by the philosophy. So I was always torn between that and like books on witchcraft that you could get from the library. And I was kind of trying to see mm -hmm. what fit, you yeah. know? So it was coming into my own power that really caused those breaks. Is magic effective? Is it a tool that I need? Mm -hmm. No, because in really the Eastern traditions are more about just being present and observing. Sure. Yeah. You know, so that was really the cause. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's important to take breaks, too, to make sure that you're actually assimilating and integrating the information that you're accumulating and acquiring as well. Definitely. Definitely, I agree. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even when we look at physical processes, like mm -hmm. physical training, mm -hmm. muscular hypertrophy occurs, not when you're in the gym lifting. It occurs when you're at rest and you're getting the proper nutrition, right? So it's really no different in magic. We we have to take those, I don't want to call them hiatuses or breaks, but those moments of letting things assimilate to grow. And the nutrition is kind of, it's an allegory in this sense, but it's balanced choices in life. You know what I mean? That's the good nutrition in regard to spiritual growth. <laughs> absolutely absolutely i love the metaphor i'm actually in the process of getting a degree in kinesiology uh nice. which is the, i'm not sure if you're aware but it's the oh, yeah. basically the Part science of how of, the move, body moves yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, i studied yeah. it myself yeah excellent as excellent. a martial so, artist yeah. okay yeah and there's a lot of overlap um mm -hmm. between like the martial arts and the occult sciences and like you said nutrition and and exercise science so mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation. It sounds like we have a little bit in common already. Hell yeah. And, um, so what are some of your favorite types of practices um, to pursue? Well, from the, my perspective now, I'm going to mm -hmm. be honest. It's very simple. My, my basic spiritual practice, the foundation of it all, I'll take a 108 bead mala mm -hmm. and I'll go and I'll walk and on each bead, I recite something that I'm grateful for. Um, then on my way home, I just put it on and I bask in that power. Yes. And uh, whenever I feel low, because the mala becomes a power sink, I just throw it on. It helps kind of shift my aura, shift my vibe. But, you know, as an occultist, people might be kind of like, really? That's it. <laughs> but I've got to be honest. This is one of the most transformative practices that I teach. Sure. It's the most powerful outside of evocation, invocation. It's it's practical and it creates a vortex of blessing in your auric field. You know, absolutely. Yes. I uh, I've noticed that as well. I used to do all of these like, I, I certainly still have my morning and evening ceremonies that I do, but I've noticed that the, the more you become a part of the magic itself and it becomes a part of you, the less you have to do. Like you yeah. mentioned, just being present and being conscious in every action, it, it creates that density. Um, it creates a gravity of, of your intention. It does. It does. And see, this is one of the primary fundamental things that I teach. It, it, it's really about not compartmentalizing our spiritual life from our mundane life. We yeah. want to put these things in a box as if they're not mutually dependent mm -hmm. and they are mutually dependent. 
Absolutely. You know what I mean? We completely contradict ourselves by saying we hate Christianity, which I don't. But there's a lot of occultists that do. They contradict themselves by saying that. And then, for instance, getting in a circle on Wednesday, yet living a life that is completely counter to their goals. Like, if mm. you're invoking off the top of my head, let's say Diana to land the mark to get a job, mm -hmm. but you're not applying, <laughs> you know, things like mm -hmm. that. And it's really basic practical stuff that we miss. Mm -hmm. And it, once you, once you learn that they are one, mm -hmm. you know, you start to get better results because Absolutely. it's the same thing. Life is the ritual. Yes. It doesn't end. Yes. When we step upon the path, we say, oh, that's what this is. It's a ritual. Mm -hmm. You know, and every decision, every choice we make, it's like a movement within the circle. Yeah. This is the altar. Mm -hmm. The altar is a microcosmic representation of this world. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Learning to integrate the above and the below <clears throat> and the within and the without is, is, crucial to efficacy i think it is mm -hmm. it is it's a fundamental thing that people miss altogether and i've got to be honest modern magical traditions built upon religious ideologies that are based in politics that's what keeps it from being real yeah yeah you know, absolutely because we we can't choose between light and darkness when we have to have both the Ida mm -hmm. and the Pingala, mm -hmm. the twin serpents yes. within. Both of these nadis, these energy pathways, have to be cleared for the Kundalini, what I call the breath of the dragon, to rise. Right. If we don't have that balance, we're not illuminated, period. Right. right. So when you're sitting there saying, I'm a right-hand path magician, I'm a left-hand path magician, I won't work with angels. I won't work with demons. <laughs> what you're really doing is you're making a proclamation of personal disempowerment. Yes, absolutely. I, I often, to, to people who identify with the lunar current specifically and, and more heavily, I always say even the moon becomes full of light. You know, it's it's not always the new moon, the, the dark moon. Even the moon becomes fully illuminated at certain points in its cycle. Right. Oh, yeah. And see, a severe untruths start to become cultivated and developed when mm. these sorts of things happen. When these sorts of imbalances happen in our practice, it's just terrible. It wreaks havoc in our lives. Yes. And, you know, this is why you always hear about magical blowback and things like this. People really have no insight <laughs> into what's actually going on. You know, they really don't. Mm -hmm. uh, even basic spell work. Right. Everyone knows what they want to man. They want to manifest this. They want to manifest that. But what they don't understand is that in order to do that, that which is must currently be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Therefore, light is darkness. Creation is destruction. God is the devil. Above is below. Mm -hmm. There's no need to differentiate them. So when you come to the simplicity of all that, it really is, man. It's just a matter of living your life, understanding that it is magic, it is miraculous, and using circumstances, even the suffering, as a means to grow a knowledge of self, your own limitations, and your goal is to overcome them. It's that simple. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I can't agree. I can't agree more. A lot of what you're saying resonates with a lot of what I, I, I say as well. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I, again, I love the idea of just something as simple as having a mala and a recitation daily. Yeah. Um, it, it makes it very practical. And it brings it all the way down to, to the earth. It completes that cycle between, in some yes. traditions, the four worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, definitely. If you're talking about Kabbalah, yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. It brings it directly down. And this is one of the important things. This is what people don't understand is that this practice, when I give people this practice, it's not something I give to my elite students. I give it to everybody. I tell everybody to do this all the time. I right. mention it in my live streams. It is rebalancing the world soul. Like yes. everyone in this world is paying attention to what they want. And because of that, they are never, ever grateful for what they have. You know, I had a student of mine who actually graduated from my course last year. I got livid with him because he said, yeah, man, I was walking around the block and I spent about five minutes reciting a few things that I'm grateful for. And I just couldn't think of anything. And I lost it. I'm like, I can't believe I gave you a fucking certificate. Excuse my language. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> but worries. i was livid right you know what i mean because you're not a magician if you're not grateful <laughs> right you have to see what you have you have mm -hmm. to be aware of the tools you have as a magician and you have to be aware that those tools are within mm -hmm. and one of the primary tools is gratefulness it's the primary absolutely. tool of manifestation absolutely yeah i i agree with that 100 percent as well and as you mentioned, like making sure that you're you're doing things as well. I think that's so crucial because so often in spirituality, people are always looking up or always looking down, so to speak. But the power comes from within. Yeah. Um, it, it's so much about that the current flows through you. If you're not taking action, if you're not finding things, like you said, to be grateful for, you know, there has to be mm -hmm. solve and coagula. You have yeah. to be able to pull things apart and, and, and then assess what you have to know what you need. Right. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the alchemical process is about. A lot of people, you know, I, I really focus on Negrito, Albedo and Rubido. Mm -hmm. But what a lot of people, they think that like the first two phases of alchemy are separate, but they're not. It's like uh, the two <laughs> sharp edges of a sword. It's one blade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very well. And it's cutting away those things that stand in between you and anchoring that divine potential within, mm -hmm. you know. So understanding that understanding the lunar currents the solar currents they are all one fulfilling your potential this is key mm -hmm. self-actualization is the entire point absolutely it is not about revering angels and demons it's about understanding this basic fact that the mysteries are right in front of us for instance within the modern left-hand path and i know i'm going to piss off a lot of modern feminists but lilith is not a goddess Lilith was the first human woman, and her being the mother of demons gives us insight into the origins of the demonic. It's us. Hmm. There was no demons before her. She is the mother of demons. She was the first wife of Adam. They might not teach this in Kabbalah. But let's face it, Kabbalah is a received tradition. That's what the fucking word means. <laughs> Literally, yeah. And and when we look at this, we 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 want to bump new age religions and shit out of the way. Well, then you got to toss the clip off because mm -hmm. it's it's a modern lie. Mm -hmm. There's one tree. We look at that reality map, and guess what? It's based on planetary influences. Yeah, and the Chaldean it's, system, sure. Yeah, yeah, man. And it, sure, it gives us insight into above and below. What sympathetic links, tarot cards, and what can we put on our altar to pull on those strings up there? It's like playing mm -hmm. an instrument. Right. And yeah, it's simple. When you see things from that perspective, all of the complexity of these different systems, it's it blows my mind. So I think it's yeah. by design to keep people disempowered. It's sort of postmodernistic and iconoclastic in a sense. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I guess um, I find utility in separating the trees so, to some degree. Obviously, it is one tree. Yeah. It's the roots and the branches. But lately, I've been tossing around this idea in my head that perhaps the sephirot are something like the collective conscious and the yeah. pads between are like the subjective consciousness, which perhaps would mean that the clip out are like a collective unconscious and the, the tunnels or caverns would be something like a subjective unconscious. And when I yeah. think about it that way, it really does allow for a lot of inner exploration and, mm -hmm. and communion with others. Yeah, it does. And we can listen, you can take a concept such as that and apply it when it's convenient. Sure. Exactly. And it's, that's important to do. Because on the other hand, we can see this world as the cliff off. Yeah, right. Because Satan is the ruler of this world. And these are shells, husks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, it's a shell. And when I was coming up within the order of phosphorus, we were always told that the cliffa were meant to be filled, in essence, with our life, our right. intent, our light. And this was what the principle of Lucifer represented, our will, our intent. Not necessarily this demonic king thing. Like, oh, God, that's another thing that irritates me. Lucifer wasn't even in the Bible. <laughs> it's, it's irritating because modern Christianity, they lie. Lucifer is he's the consort to diana mm -hmm. his name wasn't in the bible at all until it was translated into latin right Lucifer. in the original yeah right. the greek the hebrew the septuagint it it just wasn't there right you know but yeah i got off track my bad no no that's okay this is totally a free-form discussion and feel free to feel free to um speak about what you want to speak about because oftentimes that causes a lot of of interesting original discussions that we don't cover. I, I've got, I, I played 20, I played put 20 questions with the guests, right. but oftentimes it's, it you know, goes what off. you want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And that's why some of these end up three hours long because we right. just go and go and go. So you mentioned the order of phosphorus that's related to, to Michael W. Ford, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. correct. Is there anything yeah. you can tell us that you feel that you still draw value from in that system? Yeah. Antinomianism. Okay. Independent thought. Mm -hmm. The Order of Phosphorus went underground years ago. They just recently opened up their doors. And when they did, it's pretty much anybody can join. Right. You used to have to fill out an application and all that. But when they went underground, uh, we pretty much all took a vow to continue with our path, continue with our purpose in our own way. And to achieve, to achieve goals. And I was sure to do that, you know, um, that antinomian thought process, that ability to know self and mm -hmm. stand firm, 10 toes down in the mud to fight for what you think is right, while also maintaining integrity and the intent to spread harmony mm -hmm. rather than discord. It's not a lot of times these modern left hand path guys and gals, and it's not all of them. Michael Ford is one example. They they lack balance, and um, the left hand path is really an excuse to be a butthole, a narcissistic <laughs> abuser, an alcoholic, right? You know, an excuse to not um, integrate your traumas and work yeah. through them. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Exactly. Interesting. It's just my view. I, I, I agree with that. And I've, I've seen it firsthand. Um, you know, let, let, like I said, I'm not sure I could say it better than, you know, an excuse to ignore the traumas and to let them fuel your life uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a way of discord, like you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, man, we cause it. You know, everyone it, like they will it moves from one extreme to the next. And these extremes don't exist. Right. There's not a duality. Right. There's a polarity. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you got daddy issues, so you leave Christianity, they 
go from this life of conservative Christian, whatever. I can't sin. I have to control my desires to I'm going to go sleep with everything. I'm going to go use every substance. I'm going to do it mm-hmm. as much as I can. It's the same self-limiting BS right. on the other side of the spectrum. Right. Exactly. You know, and that's what people need to understand. I, I really focus on what I call uh, the womb of the dragon, mm-hmm. which I consider, I mean, allegorically, I guess that would be dark energy, but okay. zero point. Right. When positive one comes into existence, negative one comes into right. existence. Exactly. Positive two, negative two. Three. Yeah. Zero so, equals two. <laughs> right. This happens. It's really the the polarity and this is what i tell people you know we don't need a dark tree this is why the pillar of severity and the pillar of mercy is there the duality that people accept here on this world in this world it's there already right and when you understand that you start to see that wait a minute this is one tree So these dualities are not really separate because they're connected Mm -hmm. by these various paths. Like these great mysteries, dude. Derp. (laughs) It's right there in front of our face. Absolutely. Well, and it's interesting you mentioned the pillar of severity and the pillar of mercy because only the pillar of mildness goes all the way from divinity to... to, Yes, exactly. It's the only one that goes all... And that's the draconian path. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. So are, are there any, any things that you would consider um, adverse to your practice or like maybe workings that you don't enjoy doing just because you don't, you don't know enough about them or you just don't enjoy doing them? Well, there are certain things I won't delve into. Okay. Um, voodoo. Okay. Mainly because I'm white. And I believe that in that case, the cultural misappropriation is real. Okay. There's way too many drug addicted white boys out there claiming to be Bocor. Sure. And they're not. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you're going to New Orleans or you're getting initiated in Louisiana, are you learning something? Yeah. But you're also learning from a white person. You're not learning from a Haitian. I guarantee it. Because a Haitian isn't going to give you those secrets. You know. Um, I respect it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I won't, I won't fuck with it. Right. I won't. You know. Other than that, though. No, I'll do anything once at least sure. to see what I experience because I really believe that's what antinomian thought needs. We need to expand our horizons to our own experience. Right. Get out of that comfort zone, so to speak. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm not opposed to, you know, the Abremelin right. I'm not opposed to the LBRP. I'm not opposed to what the lesser banishing ritual of the Lucif- Luciferian. I'm not, I'll do whatever, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, I'm going to do what's tried and true. Right. You know, cause you get a lot of people in the occult that want to swap things around with the LBRP and it just doesn't work then. It doesn't it's work. a formula at the end of the day. Well, yeah. Well, people need to understand me, Kyle, Yadhe, Vadhe, these are all frequencies. They are geometric patterns, mathematical formulas, yeah. And without that formula, you're not going to get the psychic empowerments. You're not going to get the ignition of the light body. You're not going to get the stronger aura. So therefore, you're not going to develop the ability to astral project. You're not going to have more subconscious dream recall. The LBRP in the middle pillar, I mean, you, you did it for three years back in the day before you learned anything else yeah right and listen the magus they would look at you and they could tell 
your attitude, your auric field, your chakras. Depending on the magus and their gifts, regardless, they could tell if you were doing it and if you weren't. And usually within those three years, you weeded yourself out. Right. <laughs> well said. But if you stayed and you did it, guess what? Now you've got the light body. You've got the strength. You've got the know-how and the power to move forward mm -hmm. with the work. Right. You know, And that's why perseverance is so important. Absolutely. Yeah, there's no power without discipline. I, I teach that all the time. Yeah, way true. Mm -hmm. None. 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 You know, and we can become imbalanced, too, by applying discipline in the wrong ways. I do it. I do it. We all do. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, uh, I design costumes and things like that. That's cool. I do a lot of uh, artistic stuff, like this shit here they're all spiritual statues that i've done but i do a lot of superhero shit nerd stuff it's an imbalance like i probably focus on that stuff now a bit too much mm -hmm. but the way i see it is uh, healing the inner child right and i do look at it as taking that time out to assimilate because I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm in a transition phase in my own occult practice and in my career. Yeah. Things are shifting. I can feel that's, it. That's important to recognize that a lot of people just find themselves in a plateau and they don't know how to go back to the basics in order right. to push themselves through that, that adversity. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where the basics remain important. And I know gratefulness to be the fundamental foundation of all manifestation. Mm -hmm. now the thing is like i've got a thomas wayne batman suit that i'm building out here that's cool um big pointy ass shoulder pauldrons and shit i might spend six hours a day working on stuff like that when i could be doing a video course you know <laughs> and it's so fucked up man because as a magician, you get what you want anyway. All right. Like, the thing is, I don't have to do a video course to make more money to get more things. What happens is I just give my family everything I got, and then somehow I get huge deals on EVA foam or, or whatever fabric I might need. It just happens that way. I'll have somebody donate money. You know, I, guys, this stuff is potent. There Absolutely. is truth in being able to manifest massive amounts of money. Yeah. Absolutely. I've done it. And there's there really is something to, it, it's a circuit. If you're not giving, if you're not pushing that current out, that you're not making room for things to come in, right? right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, this is, this is interesting because this relates to a lot of people's primary reasons for why they get into the occult. Mm -hmm. True. Money. Right. Saving money, grasping your last dollar. Stagnation. It's going to keep you poor. Right. You know, it's going to keep you poor as fuck. And I've really helped to transform some people in some ways by showing them that, mm -hmm. you know, um, because it does come from a lack mentality. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with that. There's a, what like scarcity and abundance is, is how I often explain it. If you, you have to act from a position of abundance, if you want to receive that abundance. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Definitely. Without a doubt. Yeah. So how has magic changed your life for the better? You've, you've already mentioned several ways, um, but was there any, anything else that you wanted to, to add to that? Yeah, sure. Um, it's been my lifeline. Mm. I, I teach one thing that most people won't agree with and I've lived it. 
Mm -hmm. And that is when life gets hard, you must decide to make it harder consciously with your own will and your own intent. This way you're in control. I like that. You see, when I was younger, I ran away. Mm -hmm. I was about 14. And uh, yeah, I was dabbling in magic and I was getting results. That's how I stayed alive. I'm an insulin dependent diabetic. Have okay. been since I was five. I was still able to get back and forth to doctors, get insulin, get food, go to school. You know what I mean? And and do great. Um, that's not normal. I'm from Youngstown, Ohio, mm -hmm. Cleveland. Being on those streets at that age. That's rough. You're going to get dead. Especially as a white boy. <laughs> I mean, if it's just the truth. <laughs> and I'm here. So it's helped me because it's been my lifeline. Like, if I had not had it, I'd probably be addicted to drugs. Mm -hmm. I'd be an alcoholic. Right. I'd probably be beating a wife somewhere that I'm taking everything from instead of giving. And no, I'm here and I'm doing okay. I'm balanced. I observe things now and I've got an ass ton of things to be grateful for that I know I don't really deserve. So yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's done everything for me. Yeah. Excellent. It's way I, love how, I love how you explain it as a lifeline. Cause I very much feel that that same way. I've, was in and out of the hospital from the time I was three until I was about 23 due to various things. And honestly, without not just like, <clears throat> not just like, like thaumaturgy and like manifestation, but like the thurgical, like the invocational right. inspirational aspect, man, I don't know if I'd be here uh, if it weren't for that lifeline. Like you, yeah, like you said, yeah, man. it's, it's a fact. I know I wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's just a fact. It's the one reason I had to get up every day. Right. You know, um, to do this practice. Mm -hmm. I remember when I wrote Black Magic of Araman. When I wrote that text. Man, I was in a dark place. Okay. I was experiencing what we would call the dark night of the soul. Some say I was crossing the abyss. Mm -hmm. It's not true. I hang out in the lower spheres. I'm not interested in doing all that fancy shit. <laughs> I have nothing to prove. I work in the lower spheres. You know? But this dark place, this dark night of the soul, you'll hear a lot of people say, just look, I know you feel alone. You feel like the gods aren't hearing you. Put your spiritual practice down. Wait. I couldn't. It's all I had. Right. Did I feel like they were listening? <clears throat> but I knew if I had this practice to do, I would stay here until the next day to do it. Right. Out of will. So, yeah, that's that's interesting for me. I almost felt like people were telling me to put it down and to take a break as well. But I something in my bones was telling me, keep going. They're testing you to see if you'll keep going without them. And that's mm -hmm. when I learned to pursue through adversity and to rely on myself. And yeah. then once I did that and once I got comfortable, that's when I felt like like the gods and, and the spirits really started to blow wind in my sails. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, there is order. Mm -hmm. The chaos is the order. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's Sounds really like what the, people... the great Jedi creed almost. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've read it. I don't remember it. I don't remember it either, but that sort of triggered that in my mind in the back. <laughs> yeah. I was actually part of the new order of the Jedi or what was it? The Institute for Jedi Realist Studies. That's Here's interesting. Back. Yeah. Yeah. I've, it's actually not, a worthwhile organization. Dude. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, they're still around. 
but yeah, man, uh, it's important definitely to remain balanced in that way. But I have always felt that at the end of the day, the dark night of the soul is a test. Mm -hmm. And I think the people in your ear, they are the vehicles of that test. And they're the ones that you have to ignore. Well said, you know, just like when they say that when you cross the abyss, even the gods themselves won't traverse that bridge with you. Mm -hmm. They will might watch and laugh at your fall or celebrate <laughs> at your success. Right. But at the end of the day, it's just you and that camel. <laughs> well said, well said. Yeah. So um, where you, you've mentioned family and you've mentioned your students and you've mentioned um, some of your interests are, is there any other places that you'd like to mention where you draw inspiration from to, to do your magic? Oh, <laughs> just everywhere now. Well, I, I don't want to say just everywhere, but yeah, just mm -hmm. everywhere because right. I've dabbled before I was ordained high priest of the covenant of the primal dawn. And then I found out that that was actually a Luciferian coven. And I was okay. like, what? Really, I'm a Luciferian now, <laughs> and that's what got me into the Order of Phosphorus, right? Which got me into Dragon Rouge, which you know got me into other areas of occult study. So, I do have this learned foundation, but at the end of the day, the influence is the moment, the least right. powerful magic I ever performed is when I'm reading out of some grimoire, even if I wrote it, mm -hmm. the most powerful magic I ever do is from the heart, right. in the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't perform the spell. The spell performs itself because right. I'm a vehicle of divine power. All said. And it's, it's a funny thing because all of a sudden rhyming couplets come out and you're not trying to rhyme. Yes. The knocking on the walls and it's just, you know. And mm -hmm. these are the things that substantiate the fact that we're on the right path and doing the right thing because you go into churches and for the most part, the only knocking on the walls you hear is because people are kicking them, flopping them around <laughs> on the floor. Sure. Yeah, I, I was just talking to my partner yesterday. I forget she said <laughs> something, but we I was talking about how some of the most powerful spells I've ever done were the improvised spur of the moment spells because I have got nothing but inspiration yeah. flowing through me. And right. it's funny because I'll often start writing in rhymes, like you said, or alliterations or tongue twisters, which are yeah. such magical ve vehicles for poetry. But I, I love that idea of like being right here right now and yeah. just being a, a vehicle of the moment, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's such a powerful thing. Yeah, it is. And it's an important, see ceremonial magic and witchcraft are not the same fucking thing. Excuse my right. language, but I don't care what anybody says. They're just not. I agree. Some will say they are exactly the same and because they're not, they are. I know that that's a mind fuck, but I won't I get, get into that. I won't get into that right now. But what I will say is that you're not ever, 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 ever in your life going to get results by doing the LBRP once. Mm -hmm. You can do a candle right to get a car once. Sure. Get that car. As a matter of fact, that's the entire fucking point. Mm -hmm. But the entire point of the LBRP, it's like a a training program like martial arts. It's a vehicle to express discipline mm -hmm. while keeping the divine intact in your mind. Right. Right. See, and you hear all these left-hand path sons of guns say, well, I won't do the LBRP because of all the angelic names mm -hmm. and all the names of God. Well, if we look at Adonai and the etymology of that, it goes back to Apollo mm -hmm. Apollo, the wielder of the trident, is really the same as Belial, etymologically. So you fools are confused. Right. Not the, the scriptures say my people will die for lack of knowledge. 
So while you people are out here spouting off a bunch of misinformation, you're missing the fundamental truths that are going to awaken you to actual power. I agree. Well, and and I also sort of approach it from the from the concept of like those names of God are energies within me. Like I'm the God of this world. And so those those like God names, so to speak, are just frequencies within my own being. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with a higher power. I'm calling the part, perhaps codes within my DNA. Who knows? You know? Yeah. No, that's exactly <laughs> what you're doing. I wrote about that in Black Alchemy of Belial. It was in the Belial Compendium. I just don't like the publisher, so I don't really want to mention Rick. <laughs> I don't like that fucking publisher. But um, the the entire working praxis, mm -hmm. it, it, it really boils down to that fundamental truth. In my I opinion. agree. I agree. Um, Napoleon Hill and I believe it's outwitting the devil talks about the concept of drifting. And I, 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 I that resonates with me so much. That's why one thing that I teach is for people who want to contact with their higher self or their HGA or their, their Socratic diamond, whatever, it's not just about saying one prayer. Like I teach that, like you need to devote, like it's a, it's a process. Yeah. Otherwise you might, you might receive knowledge and conversation with the Holy guardian angel, but you're going to forget about it in a week because you're too busy scrolling TikTok or whatever. Yeah. So it's really about, like you said, that, 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it is, it's not even just maintenance in a stagnant sense. It is the maintaining of progress. Mm -hmm. see if we don't persevere and continue with the practice we don't see the progress and when we don't <laughs> see the progress we're not going to exactly. continue with the practice this is exactly. so funny but you, we see how they're both the same but this mm -hmm. is just even more proof and validation of everything that i'm saying there is no duality there is polarity right. and this is a basic hermetic principle yeah i was just it goes to back to fucking atlantis mm -hmm. you know what i mean and we are completely stupid by allowing these occult traditions to teach us we have to choose between angels and demons because they are parts of us. Do they exist outside of selves as potentials within the fabric of reality? Yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you mentioned the Socratic diamond. It's just, this is one and the same with the Dracontia of lore. Mm -hmm. Right. See, okay, how can I... I want to make this simple, but there's 72,000 crystalline sand-like particles around the perineum. Okay. Every one of those 1,000 crystalline particles equates to a program of potential we call a goetic demon. Makes sense. We have 72,000 sand-like crystalline particles around the pineal gland. Every one represents one of the 72 angels of the Shem Hem. Of the Shem. Mm -hmm. right? So when the Kundalini rises, what happens is the sand like crystalline particles start to join. This mm -hmm. is why in the Goetia, some of these demons want to return to their thrones. That's what this exactly. means. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So what happens is through friction, these sand-like particles start to congeal. This is the solve coagula. Mm -hmm. right? They start to congeal, become gelatinous. And the pineal gland, it starts to produce carbon. Mm -hmm. Carbon is coal. Mm -hmm. Like a diamond. What is friction? Pressure. And pressure, yeah. So the dracontia, the black diamond, it's a mm -hmm. literal thing. Mm -hmm. So through these codes that I'm talking about that no one else talks about, no one else teaches this shit. <laughs> through this, we see that the Goetia, the angels, they are steps on our own ladder of evolution. So path working them mm -hmm. is what we should be doing. Absolutely coming to understand them. It's what we should be doing. We look at the grimoire descriptions of some of these demons, dude, it is pathetic. 
Like, really? Your power is to make women get naked in front of me. What the fuck's that for? Really? I can get laid, dude. Mm -hmm. As ugly as I am, I can get laid. <laughs> Come on. Is that a power? But when we start to look at the subconscious symbolism, he exactly. comes riding on a crocodile with a hawk on his arm, and we look at these symbols and what they mean. Now we're getting deeper insight into yeah. what these daemons can teach us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. And I I love the that you bring up like the subconscious uh, symbolism metaphors because when it talks about someone like Vasago or Vasago being able to um, acquire lost things like perhaps you could also use that to acquire a lost memory or mm -hmm. a lost treasure within the soul you know something ancestral that has been long forgotten like who cares about getting laid who cares about getting a promotion do you really need a demon or an angel to do that no like it, it's it's about something higher and something deeper than that yeah yeah i agree and that's what's really messed up is man People get into the occult thinking that it's about getting your wishes granted. They don't understand mm -hmm. that it's really about getting work in, real work, mm -hmm. the work that we're supposed to be doing here, man. And Alchemy. people will hate you. People yeah. will hate you. Like, what do you mean you're not working a nine to five? I fucking hate you. People will hate you. <laughs> it's people envy, are, I think. Yeah, living under the same – people under the same roof will hate you and become jealous. Mm -hmm. And this is what yeah. shows you, okay, they're not contributing to my life. They aren't contributing to harmony. So I've got to go yes you know this is the alchemical sword that we were talking about the albedo the negrito mm -hmm. it's the same fucking thing yes. this is what makes way for the rubido mm -hmm. you're wielding this sword now you're cutting away all that shit that gets in the way yeah anchoring the divine within can happen all of the sudden right. Right. without it without all these all these obstructions man how it's not gonna happen mm -hmm. it just doesn't mm -hmm. So are there, you mentioned just off the top of your head, you mentioned Diana and you've mentioned a few other names like Lucifer and, and Belial and um, a few others. Are there any specific entities that you feel um, that have sort of propelled you forward on your magical path along the way? Payman. Okay. King Payman. Okay. Or Paimon. All right. Art and science is my thing. Same. So, he is a patron, without a doubt. Awesome. Um, one of the less... Although I've seen him or experienced him manifest rather aggressively, he's one of the more... I don't want to say gentle. Refined. Refined is a good... Yeah. It's interesting, too, because I've noticed that as well. And... There's something about, and perhaps this is just conjecture, perhaps it's just, it's something that is subjective to me personally, but I've noticed something about the nature of the Goetic seals, where the mm -hmm. ones that are symmetrical, like Agares, and <laughs> um, like, I don't know, I could, I could name a few other, but there are certain seals that are symmetrical in nature. Belial. Those tend to be, yeah, exactly. Those tend to be more refined, as you say, and balanced in nature. Yeah, that's an interesting observation when we come to understand what sigils mean and what they are. <laughs> right. Because exactly. they're linear codes. Exactly. Yes. You know, we're talking about, you know, these divine names and shit, how they're mathematical formulas. Right. What people need to understand is the Goetia is actually a book full of demons. When you are looking at that sigil, that's the physical manifestation. What you have to learn how to do mm -hmm. is connect to the power behind that. Right. You have to unlock the code. This is where the activation of the sigil comes into play. Absolutely. Yes. Um, the proper offerings and things like that helps. But <clears throat> I even teach, I have a free sigil magic course. It's two parts. And my method of sigil magic, it's unlike anyone else's. And it ensures that every sigil you make and produce is linked directly to your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. directly um, so I think those seals that we find in the Goetia what we are contacting is like a, how that potential exists objectively in the fabric of reality mm -hmm. yeah when we come 
to know the spirit, our understanding of it is going to be more refined by default. We'll learn more by the various ways they manifest through the subconscious symbolism. That's we got to understand things are going on. When we're seeing Belial this way, this time, this way, this time, this way, this time, this is this is shit getting moved around mm -hmm. back here to transform us. This is what people need to know. Right. But when you make the sigil yourself, you are connecting to that force as it exists in a very intimate way mm -hmm. within you. Mm -hmm. And there's something about the kind of gnosis that you get from employing those sorts of sigils, man. Like, if everybody were to make their own sigil of Lucifer, for instance, every magician in the world decides they're going to evoke. The information that we would come out of that operation with as a collective right. would change the world. The and it would all be different. Yeah. yeah. And it would be unique to each individual, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. So yeah, I think that's the difference. I think so too. I think you're definitely onto something that resonates with me very deeply. An another thing that I would perhaps maybe not suggest, but offer um, mm -hmm. is I've noticed that there really is something between, I, I think that the etheric auric field or body is the link between the astral and the physical plane. And yeah. so anytime I'm working with a sigil or a seal, I have a direct focus on my etheric body and I sort of channel that essence into the seal or the sigil or whatever candle I'm working with. And that was just like revolutionary for me. And it was just sort of like, I don't I, I almost felt like I leveled up as a practitioner once I started doing that. And it, it, it seems like you're sort of, you mentioned the, the Ida and the Pingala and the Shoshumna. And mm -hmm. that whole current going from the, the perineum up to the pineal. I mean, to me, that's partially <clears throat> what that activation, I don't want to say is for, but relates to is mm -hmm. connecting those worlds and making, like you said, a personal connection to those entities. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Intuitively, I kind of feel like you do a lot of invoking, mm -hmm. I do. bringing the spirits inside of you for that inspirational power to allow that power to express itself through you to achieve goals. I said that's do. a good thing. That's a great yeah. thing. And I can definitely see how that would be most conducive to operations of invocation, but mm -hmm. also useful in evocation because you right. got to think, man. No matter what, the whole point of the operation is relationship, relating. Mm -hmm. You give, you get. Mm -hmm. You know, and the circle is needed. The circle is your aura. Yeah. All of these modern left-hand path guys and gals saying that they don't need a circle. They're full of it because the circle is your aura. And if you don't have a strong circle, you aren't protected. Mm -hmm. just the truth you might well, get yourself a little fucked up and a lot of them do and they think i'm being initiated no dude you cursed yourself <laughs> you're being devoured yeah <laughs> i but, see it in your aura like you're yeah. being chewed alive yeah. uh-huh stop it please well and and i also <laughs> think about the circle as a point of concentration it contains those forces so that they're not divergent and you know yeah. like when you drink something, your stomach doesn't have holes in it so that it can absorb that stuff. The circle is also a, a, a concentration force as well, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Well, see, I think really that's what the LBRP is. It is a contraction of mm -hmm. the muscle. And the more you contract a muscle, the stronger it gets. Right. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think that just because you're lifting more weight, your muscles are getting bigger. They think that equals strength, and it's not true. What's happening is the neurological pathways are becoming more effective. Same mm -hmm. thing with the LBRP. The pathways between you and your personal power, they're opening up. Right, right. You know. And specificity comes to mind. You know, you, you sort of upgrade in, to the nature in which you were challenging yourself. Yeah. So if you're only challenging your mind, you're only growing your mind. Once you start challenging your etheric body or your astral body, you will start to, you know, create hypertrophy 
in those bodies as well. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, that's the difference between ceremonial magic and witchcraft. I believe both practices are essential, you know, and I, I really do. I do believe that there's definitely a practical reason for wanting to explore Buddhism, Zen, Taoist magic. Mm -hmm. Oh, wild shit. I love love Taoist magic. Me too. Yeah, same. Um, Filipino. I mean, I've studied Filipino martial arts my entire life. And the magic that those people hold is insane. And then my own blood. You know, the Celts, the, the Norse, mm-hmm. um, they're wonderful avenues and they all offer something. And this right. is what I love about the current that I teach is it doesn't matter where you come from. We're all scales on the body of the one dragon, just like right. all of the angels, all exactly. of the demons. I call those the wings of the dragon, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the 72 and the 72. And it's no coincidence that those 72,000 sand-like crystalline particles, when you add them together, they equal the 144,000. This mm-hmm. is the illumination. It's the illumination talked about in the book of Revelation. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I, I, I often talk about each religion as one piece of the pie. Um, yeah. But I, I love the analogy of the scales of the dragon as well. It's very yeah. evocative. <laughs> yeah, and it's important, man, because we see we we start coming up in traditions like okay i was a part of amork okay i i really love rosicrucian development dude those mm-hmm. people develop and cultivate good useful people i appreciate amork the rosicrucians mm-hmm. are cool mm-hmm. um but someone from their school of thought would likely because i say demon they're not gonna come learn under me right right you know what i know is that when people do now this entire new potential starts to open up within their own system right students operating within schools of kimbanda same students coming in from Thalima. same Mm -hmm. i'm a man of synergy same so when i see traditions and points of synergy yes boy i'm gonna i'm gonna create that synergy me too i love syncretism and because i mean there is truth like i said it's all it's all one piece of the pie like you said it's all Mm -hmm. scales of the same dragon if you're you're limiting yourself um Mm -hmm only drawing from one tradition like obviously like you know if you're a devout to one tradition there's a lot that can be gained from that but yes like you can always see more from the outside looking in and that's sort of what you're doing when you step out of your favorite tradition or your you know Mm -hmm. your favorite purview is you're you're seeing things from a different perspective which is growth that's evolution right yeah man and I agree. One of my favorite occult teachers, um, not that he's a direct teacher of mine, so I won't call him a teacher because I'm not affiliated with the Mother Temple, but Mark Allen Smith of Primal Craft. Very, very powerful fucking magician. What makes is, you say that? Go ahead. Sorry. He's one of the reasons I am the magus I am today. He has completely transformed my life from the very few interactions I've had by simply looking at how he responds to me, (laughs) looking at how he treats me. And -hmm. it wasn't always good. There was, there's Mm -hmm. points in time where don't you dare do that. You're fucking stupid, you know? Mm -hmm. And I needed that. That's exactly what I needed. I was able to get my ego out of the way. Right. And see that. But His work really was the reason for the work I'm doing now. It opened my eyes in such powerful fucking ways. But his one tradition is one, uh, I would call it bhakti, devotion. 
Okay. Yeah, certainly. It's a path of devotion. Like you don't have time to explore other paths. Right. When he says you've got to carve a sigil into wood, he doesn't mean draw it on permanent marker Mm -hmm. on a piece of glass. No, you're going to get out your little fucking knife or your Dremel Mm -hmm. and you're going to carve that fucking thing in the wood. Right. You're going to put in the time. You're going to put in the work. And he will tell you, when I say we need a physical gate, we need a physical gate. Wood works for a reason. We're talking about the tree of life and opening doorways. This is how you do it. Okay. Cool. But then you grow, you grow, you grow, you grow. Then you get outside of that. And because you devoted yourself, That devotion tends to lead to more open eyes in regard to looking into other traditions. So there's a synergy between the bhakti and the devotion to the tradition itself, as well as moving beyond it. And we can't be afraid to learn from others. This is what the human experience is for. And this is one of the reasons this world has gone to hell in a handbasket. We are all divided by race, religion, and creed, even though we live in a country where we proclaim that we aren't. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Look at America now. I mean, I don't even want to talk about some of the issues. And then, gosh, you look at Israel. That's been happening for 6,000 years. They're acting like it's new. Mm. You know what I mean? It's a shame that we can't see the power in coming together and learning from one another. But, see, I teach the same bhakti. It's just, it's about community service. Mm-hmm. Like, because that's what the the ancient gods tell me to do. Right. They tell me to cultivate useful people by teaching them to serve mankind. They get enough of the esoteric stuff in class they get enough of the meditation and the breathing and the the rituals and stuff throughout the year where they're really going to create change in their life and in the lives of others it's in serving right others i I want i agree people need to be devoted to other people Mm -hmm. when that occurs this will be a different world so that's why i believe that and that's why i teach it now you know. I, I believe that as well. I often describe it as being self-reliant, but community driven. And yeah. that creates a, yeah. a very powerful balance. Mm-hmm. And it's it also is a call back to what I was saying about scarcity and abundance. When you are giving to other people, you're creating a vacuum. And as Aristotle said, mm-hmm. nature abhors a void and more or less words. Um, you're you're creating more area for that divine or you know power to to come within you i think yeah aristotle said that maybe i could be wrong but i thought i thought aristotle no, it might be that. no i was literally i was asking because i think I've he said never heard it horror vacui i think is how he said it but it essentially nature abhors a void and that's why i also teach anytime you're banishing you need to invoke because if you mm-hmm. go and you dig a hole out in your yard yeah. it's going to fill up and if you banish something well the closest thing is the thing that you just banished and it's probably going to come right back. So anytime you banish, you need to invoke something in its place. And that comes from, that comes from NLP a little bit, but yeah. Well, it does, but there's that synergy between NLP (laughs) and magic. You you know what I mean? And and it's logical and it's antinomian thought process. Mm -hmm. It's something that is important that I actually conceptually agree with 100, 200%. Mm -hmm. Not that that's a possibility, but, (laughs) you know, it's not taught anywhere else. And that's the thing. When we are actual practicing magicians and we're living it breath by breath, there's all of those little subtle nuances and things that honestly, they, we can say them, but people, they're not going to grasp it. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. you got to be doing the work to understand those subtle nuances. Right. And that's another reason I, I do consider Mark Allen Smith to be powerful. As he said, the most fundamental truth, and I believe it was uh, Queen of Hell, he said witchcraft is largely about becoming 
sensitive to very subtle energies. Hmm. Being sensitive to those sh subtle shifts, like that self-awareness. I'm going through a transition. I need to right. build Thomas Wayne Batman suit. <laughs> yeah. I might be making excuses, but I doubt it. I know me. I do. I've not arrived in regard to my spiritual evolution because I'm not Enoch. I'm mm -hmm. not an angel. But I know what I need to be doing. And one thing that I understand is that when somebody tells you what you need to be doing, it's because they're not paying attention to what they should be doing. Right. Projection, essentially, yeah. a lot of times. And time. oftentimes, that's the reason they feel like you're not doing what you should be doing. When all reality, doing exactly what the fuck you should be doing. Exactly what, you know, your, your mom might think you writing this grimoire is a waste of time. Go get a job. She might get scared and want to lock you up in a mental institution. It happened to me. Man. I told my mom, I'm going to do this. You're not going to stop me. I left. You know, it's, it's really about understanding the difference between being an asshole and doing what you got to do. There's a fine line. Yeah, I... It's it's funny how much synchronicity becomes a part of life. You've brought up two things in the last 10 minutes that are extremely relevant to the last 24 hours. I was just saying that there's a balance between being yourself and allowing other people to be themselves. And yeah. I've just inscribed Noti Sautan, which means know, know yourself or know thyself, mm -hmm. on my, my study threshold just before we were, were having mm -hmm. this discussion. Yeah. It's synchronicity is such a powerful significator in my mind. Synchronicity is the dragon. Mm, I like that. Synchronicity is the dragon. And I tell people this and I warn people you're, mm. you might start to think you're going crazy because <laughs> when you start, you step into the occult through the lens of the right hand or the left mm -hmm. hand, mm -hmm. you have some experiences, you come to some revelation cool but when you're not limited to that and you dive head in mm. head first the dragon notices and that's the synchronicity and it's mm -hmm. it it comes forth like a floodgate when people interact with me that's the one thing that occurs like clockwork synchronicity is constant and mm -hmm. it's because of my constant invocation of the one absolutely the one dragon you know and you experience the same thing i'm sure at different levels invoking various spirits mm -hmm. and you start to get to know them better through yourself and how these forces and potentials express themselves through you and then the synchronicity happens more and more you know and this is the thing i tell people like when you're evoking i've got to tell people what to actually expect because you got ding dongs out there saying that a man is going to be standing in the triangle of manifestation that you can shake hands with hand over this contract, sign it <laughs> and it, poof, he's going to disappear into the depths of hell. $30 million is going to manifest in your corner. Like, come on, man. It's not how right. it works. Magic can't break physics. Like the law of physics still apply. Right. Cause we're in the physical world, but right. synchronicity <laughs> um hearing some like you might be in the grocery store i had this happen i had this happen to me years back i'm trying to remember exactly what i heard but i was in the grocery line i was working within the ancient persian praxis at the time and i had this question on my mind about junk DNA. Intriguing. Because I couldn't, for the life of me, accept the fact that it was junk. And I was just probing 
this div, probing and probing, Akomana, probing, probing. Two different people having two different conversations, but the two words that I heard, dark energy. Uh huh. Yeah. So then I go and start researching dark energy. So I'm like, mm. well, are you, you're telling me that junk DNA is somehow physical expression of this stuff. What's it for? Mm. What's it for? You know? Yeah. Anyway, it's within that book, there, there's this huge depth, but that's just one example of how the spirits will speak. Just right. random, mm -hmm. random shit like that. One example of hundreds I could give. Sure. Another example, uh, fuck, I had to get a tire change at Walmart. Go in, sit down, open up a car magazine of all places. I'm looking for information in regard to a specific subject. And there was a course, an online course that I just, I opened the magazine. I don't give a fuck about cars. Why did I open this magazine? First of all, <laughs> then the first thing I see, ZBrush, 3D modeling, just another example, mm -hmm. you know. Is that how those statues, those effigies in the background were made with 3D modeling? Yeah, it's an example. Yeah, that's all 3D model. Okay, cool. Yeah, those right. aren't my designs. But I still, it's just an example. And right, people right. need to understand that that's how it works. It, it, it can happen through dreams. It can, mm -hmm. the, this is why the cultivation of this power is so important. And the LBRP and all these basic fundamental things, they will get you far. You know, yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, so it's interesting to me that you matter that you mentioned dark energy and or dark matter, whether or not the same thing. Um, yeah, they're not. To me, that's sort of one thing that the Klepot or the Klefoth, um mm -hmm. relate to is is dark energy. Um, yeah. Is that something that you've sort of? Um, I don't. What's the word I'm trying to think? That, that, does that resonate with you? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, well, let me think about this for a moment, because during the time I'll, I'll say this, the Persian current, you're you can you can place all we can put any any fucking mythology we know we could put on the tree. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying now, trust me, just don't you're not going to put the, the Persian current on the tree. Great they're so intermingled with each sphere you, you really can't yeah yeah but at any rate um dark energy would be those realms beyond the cliff dark matter on the other hand mm -hmm. which is different well there, i see them as two it's, sides of the same coin perhaps though they are just like okay. creation and destruction sure but, you know, for the sake of answering the question, right, right, right. I would say that dark matter would be more akin to the tree because there's more substance. Sure. I consider the dark matter to be the shells that we or the potential that we mold and shape to fill the shell here. Like I see dark matter as the very clay mm -hmm. or maybe 3D resin <laughs> that, the ma that the magician uses uh -huh. to create the art or the life. Sure. that they want to create in an analogous sense you know but yeah i mean i think you're onto something there and i don't see anything wrong with viewing it that way it's mm -hmm. common sense really mm -hmm. it's, it's what you can see and what you can't right but yeah there's those realms beyond right and I, that see i think dark energy is or i'm sorry yeah dark energy is more akin to that not saying that it's fundamentally fact it's just a it's a bit more again. no i i agree with you 100 percent. one of one of the personal gnosis gnosis <clears throat> that i had working with azazel when i was running through the the Klefoth the first time was when i got to when i got to thalmael um it was mentioned to me that the crown is but a stepping stone 
Mm. And I took that to mean like, this is just the door. Like every yeah. one of these and that's doors. The truth. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It's like getting your black belt. And then, and that's <laughs> right. The, the, the crown is not a shock. It's, right. It is a door. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, there's so much misinformation in regard to yoga yeah. And the practice and application of Kundalini, right. even Tantra. Everyone thinks right. it's all about sex magic. Sex magic and Tantra are two different things. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I really do see importance in exploring various different paths like that. But at the end of the day, the Cliffa definitely can be aligned with dark energy. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, there's quirks in my head that won't mm -hmm. let me just commit to that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And you even know? I don't necessarily commit to it. It's just sort of something that I've been running through and sort right. of, you know, like, yeah, and I have, and pestle. <laughs> yeah, I have, I've ran through it so many times mm -hmm. and I've, th I've had the same thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I still keep it's more akin to dark yeah. energy uh -huh. i think dark energy is the divine that resonates with me very very heavily and the, the notion of the void and perhaps yeah. now now it's of the void even yeah and that's the thing the divine i don't use the term god goddess mm -hmm. i don't use the term god and satan mm -hmm. i use the term the dragon mm -hmm. or the one or the divine because it's beyond all of that. Yeah. But I, I really agree. do. I think that the void, dark energy, like they're not the same. People say the void is the abyss. It's not. I think the void is the womb of the dragon. It's that zero point energy. What we do with the divine, because mm -hmm. it's a part of us, it's encoded in us. What we do with it is our choice. Right. We can create and we can destroy. As a matter of fact, both are needed. Uh, yeah, 100%. both are needed in this world to evolve. The problem is the ego starts to apply these potentials in the wrong context. And that's where huh. evil starts to exist. Right. Yeah. So it's not about fighting against good and evil. It's about learning how to apply the powers of light and darkness in the proper context. Let's see, if we can do that, we can redeem the most wicked demons not to say that that's an objective of mine maybe that's something i should look into <laughs> yeah I, I i definitely agree with what you're saying about how the ego misappropriates that that energy and that force and to me the chakras are a, a perfect the so-called chakras are a <clears throat> perfect representation of that because the light comes in and then the ego acts as a prism and it disperses mm -hmm. that light into a spectrum but it's all <laughs> one frequency yeah, man. See, specifically within the occult, you got people following specific occult authors that are obsessed with evocation. <laughs> like people hear occult, and that's what they think of now conjuring demons. Uh huh. But at the end of the day, man. There's so much more to do. There's so much more about us to explore, like get beyond it, get outside that box. Yeah, path working, like you mentioned. Get beyond the self. Yeah, the mm -hmm. ego, I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off, but the ego, it definitely is a prism. And the seven layers of human consciousness we call chakras, mm -hmm. we get obsessed with like opening the third eye to see the <laughs> spirits, but we can't do that until everything else below it is yep. properly balanced. And this only happens if the two nadis are cleared. And if your right-hand path or left-hand path, 85% of the time, they're not. There right. are those rare occasions where people, through antinomian thought process and higher intelligence, can decipher things. Mm -hmm. There's some out there that have. Very few, though. But, yeah, the auric field, it is the composite of those seven chakras mm -hmm. you know yeah like 
your auric field is going to reflect the condition and balance of those energy centers yes. and how well grounded they are. Mm -hmm. Yes. A lot of people, including myself, I can say a lot of times when my life is in fucking chaos, it's because those layers of consciousness aren't properly rooted. And I got mm -hmm. my head in the clouds trying to achieve some spiritual objective. Right. Right. You know. Yeah. And that, that tends toward delusion a lot of times or confusion. Yeah, yeah man. It can definitely head there. Absolutely. Without a doubt. It's interesting also to me that you mentioned um, about like everyone trying to awaken the Kundalini and open that third eye. Um, it's because when I, I talk to people a lot of times about how like they had a Kundalini experience, like the Kundalini in my experience opens multiple times at each mm -hmm. layer. And a lot of oh, people yeah. are like, oh, I opened my Sahasra chakra or whatever. It's like, you're just getting started, brother. Yeah. Like it, not, not you, but the, you know, the one oh, yeah. who, who I'm speaking so I to, is, yeah. they're just getting started. And what mm -hmm. I teach is to open up the so-called clear sentience first. So, because <laughs> if, if you, if you open up the clear audience, like spirits will tell you what they want to tell you. If you open your clairvoyance, a demon can appear as an angel, but mm -hmm. if you open your clear sentience first, you can feel the actual vibration of that entity. And we'll then see. I have them open the clear audience so that they can hear then then they'll be ready to see because a lot of times people open their third eye and they're like, close it back, close it back up. I don't want it open anymore, but it's yeah. about finding that balance. I think um, I know I'm going off on a tangent, but no, yeah. no, not at all. It's completely related to my next statement because I teach that empathy is the fundamental psychic faculty. Ooh, yes, absolutely. And you've got all these black magicians out here talking about curse, 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 kill, kill, kill. Motherfucker. You ain't going to do nothing. Excuse me. <laughs> you're fine yeah, you ain't yeah. got no power dude yeah i can tell you right now you have no power mm -hmm. no. absolutely no, no one's afraid of you fool sit down you know because you have no empathy <laughs> life is hard enough without cursing someone dead mm -hmm. you know what i mean or trying to take their life or their job and you know whatever you're doing you know i agree Stagnant energy is really the stuff of curses, and we fuck. We all encounter it daily. Mm -hmm. Stagnant parts of self that we gotta, they're stagnant for a reason, so we could chop it away. But at, at the end of the day, man, yeah, for sure, you're on to a fundamental truth because empathy, it's like the radio antenna. I agree. The first thing that happens is the manifestation of a very subtle energy field. When you authentically feel that in the atmosphere, it's like pulling the antenna up. Then, through empathy, that ability to feel, the subconscious begins to build the vision and the voice mm -hmm. according to our subconscious predispositions of that power. Yeah. This is why I can evoke Belial six times and four out of six times he can manifest in a different way mm -hmm. because my subconscious predisposition is changing. Yes. I'm getting greater insight into how this demon operates within reality. Mm -hmm. And so these different manifestations are giving me subconscious downloads through the vision, through the voice. Absolutely. Or the message is changing in proportion to your understanding. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. But see, mm -hmm. then you start to realize that a fundamental truth that they'll offer you, it has like so many layers. <laughs> sure. You know, and it will... This is why I tell people, dude, journal, 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 yeah. because oh, yeah. you'll say, eh, just this one time. I don't need to write this down. <laughs> then a year later, you'll be like, fuck, I wish I wrote this down. Oh, yeah. Because you'll come to this 
wonderful and awesome revelation that would have opened up more insight and understanding, you know? So yeah, definitely write shit down, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. <laughs> Is there Don't anything else it. that you... Go ahead, sorry. No, you'll just regret it. You know, you will regret it. Gnosis is the true treasure, man. Yes, absolutely. Gnosis is the true treasure. And people, look, they, they think that Gnosis is, it's like the information that you're getting. Gnosis is a state of being. It's a state of knowing. It's, it's where you transcend finite human thought and enter a state of knowing. Know sis. Know that which is. Mm -hmm. This is how I view it. It's a way of being. Mm -hmm. So these Gnostic schools, it's not about what you know. Mm -hmm. it, it's really about transcending the thought and being mm -hmm. divine in this yes. world. Yeah. I agree 100%. It's not about what you know. It's about how you are. You can know everything, but at the end of the day, if you're not putting it into praxis, you know, what, what do you really know? What are you really teaching? Right. Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You can't authentically teach a goddamn thing without applying it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And this is where, you know, I tell people, listen, you can't be consumed by the occult. You've got to have artistic avenues because if not, you're going to create energy blockages. Mm -hmm. You're going to experience this vast rush of power, but then you're going to want to stick there, mm -hmm. stay there. And this is going to create a blockage. Creation is divine. Yes. Creation is divinity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, spend time learning shit. Spend time cultivating new skills. Spend time artistically expressing yourself. Spend time doing all this shit. You know, martial arts, wonderful outlet as well. Yeah, I agree. Point being, that will create synergy. Because what I see fundamentally wrong with people, whether the right hand or left hand path, is the occult swallows them and it becomes all they are. It becomes all they can talk about. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of the occult, ladies and gentlemen, it is not about becoming the next great occultist. It's about becoming you. And without your life experience, you're not doing it. You've got to experience your self by externalizing self through your art yes. externalize your divine potential by finding things of interest that you want to learn if you're not doing that you're not a practicing occultist anyway right. and that's a fundamental truth that everyone seems to be missing they're not picking up what our predecessors were throwing down you know yeah i agree it's like you said, very largely about becoming who you are and helping others become who they are. At the end of the day, to me, this is all about evolution uh, of, of consciousness, not even just humanity, but consciousness itself, you know, onward and ever upward, so to speak. Definitely. Definitely. And there's a fractal nature. <laughs> certainly, to, there's certainly. To reality. reality. You yeah. know, like when we say that, there's so many. Holy shit. Yeah, there's so many different levels to that one <laughs> statement. Because then we have to divine evolu define evolution. And sure. that's a hard thing to do. You know, we can't just say it's change because you can change for the worse. And I call that devolution. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's evolution, there's revolution, there's involution, there's mm -hmm. devolution. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah, I like the pronunciation. Devolution. Yeah, yeah, devolution. Yeah, exactly. Because it is. So, it is. That's the true Satan. Mm -hmm. And we are seriously looking at the truth that Satan is the ruler of this world. We are far behind as a human race. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think so. Even compared to where we were in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I don't even want to even bring examples up. <laughs> As to why I think that or how. All I'm going to say is look at look at this shit, dude. We're making things like abortion, which are a human concern. And we're making it a political concern. Mm. And, and we're making it about everybody else and what they want to vote for. Mm. When it's highly subjective, circumstantial. Certainly. And I don't care what anyone believes. 
you're going to do what's right for you. I have no say. So I can vote all I want. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. We we live in such a litigious and and um, fractalizing, or mm -hmm. maybe not fractalizing, but segmenting society that it's just, it's tearing us apart. Like division and derision are just eating the human race alive. Yeah. Well, it's, it's religion. Yeah. I, I I've dove deep into religious corruption. Mm -hmm. And it's actually political corruption. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Like, you know, like Pope Boniface and uh, Emperor Constantine, that was one of the first major um, instances of mm -hmm. religious corruption recently. Well, recently. Well, yeah. Most, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's going on a lot. I can't mm -hmm. even say most recently. But when we, as far back as we can see, we'll say Zoroaster. Zoroastrianism. Mm -hmm. This was probably the first time in human history where the divine forces were compartmentalized into absolute dual forces like good and evil. Like Ahura Mazda and Araman? Like Ahura Mazda and Angra Menu. Or Angra Menu, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Or, or Araman, they're the same. Okay, okay. But you see, before Ahura Mazda, it was simply spent a menu or good. Right. Yeah, holy that's right. inspiration. Mm -hmm. And then before it became Araman, it was Angra Menu, mm -hmm. which simply meant evil inspiration. Mm -hmm. But both were considered gods in their own right. Certainly, yeah. However, we can look at the Bible, and this is historical fact. King Artashir of Persia is King Artaxerxes within the Bible. The Persian king Artashir brought together 40,000 Mobeds, according to Albert Pike, to essentially build the Avesta, which is the equivalent of their Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Within the Bible, it was King Artaxerxes that charged Ezra to head into Israel and write Jewish law. Now, within the book of Ezra, King Artaxerxes is talking about the God of our fathers, your God, our people. We're talking about fucking Persians that were Zoroastrian. Right? But, in essence, we see how the Zoroastrian faith was circumvented by King Ardashir mm -hmm. to create the first step toward what I call the political war machine. Yeah. It leaves a lot of room for propaganda. Uh, from I, what I, can tell. <laughs> I mean, look, propaganda, conspiracy theories, I don't waste mm -hmm. too much time with them. Mm -hmm. But I look at etymology, etymology, man. Religion, right. the very word, means to bind. Rebind, to a belief. yeah, Caligari. exactly. Yeah. yeah, you're being bound by your belief. In other words, what they're doing is they are taking control of the subconscious mind, which means mm -hmm. you don't have free will. Exactly. The free will of religion doesn't exist. And this is science when I say this. I agree, yeah. Science states that 99% it's 99 point something percent mm -hmm. of every thought, conscious thought that we have, mm -hmm. every word that we speak, every action that we take is predicated on subconscious programming. Which is why I teach NLP is one of the first things that I do. Yeah, because it ensures that you can start to exercise free will. Yes. See, and this is really what the occult to me is about. It's taking, you know, Riding in on a crocodile with a hawk upon his arm, the subconscious symbolism has great power. And mm -hmm. when you unlock it, there's so much good that can be done in the world. You know, mm -hmm. so much.
whether you're employing forces of light and forces of darkness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is why I tell people, if you're a true occultist, you can't curse. You, you just can't. I can perform a ritual where I'm trying to kill somebody, but it's probably because they're a pedophile. And it's because I'm doing them a favor and hitting the reset button <laughs> to create harmony in the world. Mm -hmm. So possibly they don't get molested to cause them to do whatever they do. This is just a random example right. off the top of my head, but you get the point. Right. Right. You know, and the, the point is what matters. Mm -hmm. um, so in other words, when I'm doing it, it's an act of love. It's not an act of egoic hatred, jealousy, envy, spite, you know? Yeah. Those yeah. things are not divine. When you're doing something for the sake of serving the greater good, the ego oh. isn't involved at all. Mm -hmm. And we've got to, we, we can't say that we aren't involved like i hate people that sit there philanthropists on youtube passing out thousands of dollars like it ain't shit i think they're doing a wonderful work but at the same time the issue. at the same time mm -hmm. It's more conducive to our spiritual development if we give for the sake of giving mm -hmm. rather than giving for the sake of YouTube clicks, right. likes, attention. Because we, we feed ourselves anyway when we are feeding the homeless. Mm -hmm. We are going to benefit. And people that deny that fact and want to say, oh, I give, I give, I give. I don't do nothing but give. And what, when am I going to get? You're getting if you're giving. If you're actually giving, you're getting. Right. You ungrateful fuck. <laughs> it's fundamental. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and this is one of these catchphrases that I have, and it's fundamentally, it's just fundamental truth. I can't stand stupid. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I find myself pointing it out way too much. And I have to ask myself, is that ego? You know. Well, I guess one thing that I would, and and I'm sure that you know this, but just to like make it um, like at the surface, like there are two types of stupidity in my mind. There's ignorance and there's passions. Yeah. Like there's things that people don't know because they didn't have the opportunity, right? which is nescience. And then there's people who had the chance to know and they just sort of like, ah, eh, whatever. I don't, I don't need that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the people who are ignorant, like I, I can definitely see why one would be frustrated with with them right but see this is the interesting part of it all getting frustrated with the ignorant it's unjust because uh -huh. it's not their fault <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. and I this do. is this is the problem with trolls and and people into this online bullying thing like mm -hmm. you honestly don't know like are you ignorant or are you stupid Mm -hmm. You just, you, there's no evidence because the dude's behind a keyboard or the chick's behind a keyboard. You know what I mean? So I just deal with it accordingly and I call them stupid. <laughs> this is sort of blanket term. It is. Well, I think I'm being honest and honesty is important to me. I, it, I might be wrong. I will say that. I'll be completely honest and say I might be wrong. But if I'm calling you stupid, it's because you're acting that way in the moment. Mm -hmm. right. And if you don't shift your behavior, then it kind of implies that you are. <laughs> sure. You know, sure. Fundamentally, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you mentioned, uh, you know, breathing exercises and meditation and journaling and, and being self-aware. Were there any other recommended practices that you would I guess, prescribed uh, to people who are sort of still trying to find their way? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Understand that the language of the subconscious mind is the language of ritual. 
and symbolism perhaps yeah when you learn dream symbolism and you mm -hmm. study dream symbolism what you're doing is you're learning about the tools and the correspondences that you can place on your altar to create change mm -hmm. so ritual is speaking the language of the subconscious mind interpretation of the symbols is learning to listen to it so yeah. my prescribed practice is actually take subconscious symbolism and write vision quests to achieve goals in a symbolic way. You right. can type them up in Word and put it on read aloud if you don't have a recorder. I love that idea. Yeah. And this way you're guided on this vision quest. Mm -hmm. And then watch your life fucking transform yes because that symbolic language what, what you're doing through this practice is you're telling the divine hey i really want to get to know you mm -hmm. i really want to speak right and what you start to find is that because you leave spaces where you're leaving room for people to have their own experiences or for you to have your own experiences. Exactly. You'll, you'll, you'll come to find that you'll experience things and then you'll be like, well, I didn't write that. You go and you look <laughs> it up. And you'll start to see how powerful and relevant it is. Right. And then the synchronicity in your life pours in. Bada bing, bada boom. The change starts to occur. Yeah. You know? So those two practices, learning the language of the subconscious mind, which is really threefold. Mm -hmm. It's studying dream symbolism, writing a dream journal, mm -hmm. and it's using those symbols to write your own vision quests and then charging that 108 bead mala with 108 things you are grateful for. And you fake it until you make it. What you're going to find is that you'll have a lot more in you through practice. You'll mm -hmm. get to that last bead and be like, well, I could keep going. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> Don't. Because what you're really doing is those things that you're grateful for. What What's happening is you're starting to prioritize your life. You'll start to see what's really important to you. So this practice is really designed to help one to know themselves. Right. So, yeah, that's what I would say in regard to that. I think that's the... great advice. And the way that you're describing ritual and ceremony is, is right on par with, with, with what I think and what I believe and what I teach. And to me, ritual and ceremony are very largely like, <clears throat> it's 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 practical philosophy and it's dramatic psychology to make an impression on the subconscious and i think that's because the subconscious is connected to the unconscious and the unconscious is connected to the all so you're basically sending a message about what you want to experience perhaps yeah you're 110 percent correct and this is why I always tell people, you're a magician. You just don't know it. We are right. all, we are all creating this reality. Mm -hmm. All of us. Mm -hmm. There is this world that I am subjectively in control of, which is my life. Mm -hmm. But there's also the subjective world that we all have to live in together. Right. Right. We need to learn how to integrate self out there. And that's where the rubber meets the road. And honestly, this is where I have a hard time as a practitioner. I mean, I got to know my own limitations. I don't get along with a lot of people because I'm not a fundamental Christian. I live in the Bible Belt. Mm -hmm. So I can't have these kinds of discussions frequently. Right. And to sit here and listen to you understand what I'm saying, you pick up what I'm throwing out, throwing down, and at the same time, it resonates. See, 
I don't experience that too much. I have other occultists who are trying to make their way up some cock riding occult ladder to tell me what I'm saying doesn't make sense. And so be it. If it doesn't make sense to you, that's fine. But you're not capable of making me feel bad because I know what I say is true. You've lived it. Right. But I also know that truth isn't necessarily fact. Right. Truth has a certain level of subjectivity. Gravity is a fact. Truth is not. Right. This is why Bruce Lee said, my truth is not your truth. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not even Bruce Lee. It's like, yeah, it's an Eastern thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could say the same. It's, I live in a, a predominantly um, fundamentally Christian area where i mean people believe that the earth is six thousand years old um yeah. and and all of these things and it's i mean honestly i like not to be whatever but i i try to spend as much of my time as i can helping people but due to the nature of my interests and the way that i present myself people automatically assume that i'm some like evil satanist or something yeah just because i wear black or or whatever when truth be told, I wear black because I'm an airhead and it helps me focus and concentrate and keep me grounded. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with any ill will, but it's really nice to have someone, you know, to resonate with, um, yeah. and pick up what I'm putting down and, and, and vice versa. Like you said. Yeah, man. Without that, you can kind of go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And this is where antinomianism, it can become dangerous because sometimes people think, it's like locking yourself in a cave mm. alone away mm -hmm. from society or just simply going to live off grid. No, it's, it's more than that. What are you doing in that cave? Cause really what you're doing is you're removing yourself from actual spiritual experience. You're closing right. yourself off to the world and Christ. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where, the proof is in the pudding. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, you're, and you're, it's important. It's I, important I, to be. It's important to be positive. Just because I'm working with demons doesn't make me a fucking Satanist. You know, and, and you're right. People will fundamentally look at you like a demon. Mm -hmm. Because you're wearing black. Mm -hmm. And you have fucking intelligence. <laughs> this is the most intimidating thing it's not even the fact that you're wearing black mm -hmm. it's not how you present yourself it's not your hoops it's none of that it's the fact that you think for yourself and those mm -hmm. people don't mm -hmm. energetically through empathy they feel it they are intimidated by it subconsciously they are told to shun it mm -hmm. So they do. That's a good point. Christianity is the one world religion that mm -hmm. the Bible warns us of. That's the irony of it all. Right. And that's it's how it's so self um self promoting and it's it's, yeah, it's like self sustaining. Self sustaining. Thank you. That's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, yes. man. Yeah. It is propagates itself and the ignorance it's instead of saying okay this isn't working obviously i need to do something else mm -hmm. you know the catholic church child molestation mm -hmm. you know they recently dug up a bunch of children's bodies at some catholic monastery in canada it's atrocious all of this sort of corruption that has occurred religiously that really started in Persia. Dude, it has so many layers, right. but it actually goes back to the scriptures. You see, because the written word now, as it exists is so analytical, <laughs> left brain, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we need to understand is that pre alphabet, yes. we had things like hieroglyphs. Yes. So 
we were able to interpret the things that we were seeing. Yes. They, we knew that they were saying this, but how we interpret it, it there's the freedom to make us learn something within us. Yes, it's a mirror, like Tarot. Yes. Tarot is a mirror. Yes, when you're doing Tarot, you're looking into a mirror. Mm -hmm. Same, same, you know. So that's what I have to say in regard to that man. That's why that fucker Artashir Artaxerxes was so obsessed with writing. Mm -hmm. We've got to write the Avesta. We've got to write Jewish law. You've got to write it, write it, write it, write it. That's why it's called spelling. Right, <laughs> exactly. They're casting spells mm -hmm. on your consciousness. And they are binding you to the belief. Mm -hmm. So instead of relying on your own experience to come to your truth, you're supposed to just rely on blind faith. The person then subconsciously is dead. You are an automaton useful to the workforce alone. Yeah. So that's why most people are there. And that's okay. You know, I'm not dissing people for working. That's silly. I'm just saying people talk about being enslaved listen start tapping into your talents start having confidence you know and you can monetize your gifts i guarantee you i guarantee you my partner has a wonderful job i try to convince her you're one of the most gifted tarot readers i know mm -hmm. make money at it Mm -hmm. you know because this hourly wage though you might enjoy the fruits of your labor mm -hmm. to an extent it's a subconscious limitation mm -hmm. see everything i do is profitable yeah even when i'm wasting time painting a fucking superhero or you know i i love expressing myself everybody can do this you don't have to be limited to slavery right and that's my message you know because fuck it really sucks because people want to work and then on their day off all they want to do is sleep they don't even <laughs> right. they don't even that's have the, the energy idea. to cook their own food mm -hmm. you know what i mean so they're eating fast food and it's yeah. it's depressing. It's, I mean, that's the plan from what I can tell is to get them so drained by the end of the weekend that they spend the whole like they spend the whole week thinking about the weekend and then the whole weekend they're worried about the upcoming week. Yeah. And it's just the cycle. And it is. It's a reciprocation of misery. Mm -hmm. I don't wish it on anybody. And it yeah. sucks. Human potential has been circumvented. Yeah. We could say by an elite few. But those elite few existed thousands of years ago. Well, and they're just a physical manifestation of a principality that, that exists subtly and spiritually, right? Yeah. Well, we all are at the end sure, of the day. Sure. We right. all are, really. But, yeah. But this elite few today, they're not mm -hmm. elite at all. They're dumbasses. I guarantee you, none of those people have a thought of their own. But the issue is, they're laughing at us, calling us dumbasses. And I could tell you that they're not wrong. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, ignorance, it's going to be our destruction. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, it's going to be what refines the human race. If there's any potential for refinement, it's what's going to cause us to step into our actual purpose beyond this system of slavery. Mm -hmm. you know, we just got to get to the point where everyone says, you know what? This is stupid. Enough of this there's, an, yeah. there's enough food for everybody. And what the fuck are we doing this for? I am not 
going to build someone else's fucking pipe dream. Mm -hmm. It's not what life is for. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I um and it's it's interesting to me too that one one thing that I had to sort of break free from from my Christian upbringing was I was raised with I was I come from a little bit of money and that sort of made me despise um the potential for wealth. So I was doing everything for free for so long. And then mm. all of a sudden I had this like epiphany that was like, well, maybe I don't have to give it to myself. Maybe I can get what I give to other people and to the spirits that have helped me. And once I started doing that, I was like, okay, like wealth isn't so bad, you know, like so much of the Christian doctrine is about, you know, how how bad wealth is i guess i'll just cinch yeah. it at that but yeah like learning to use your gifts reading tarot learning to use your gifts as an artist you can not only create wealth that you can spread but you can inspire other people to find their dreams and their passions mm -hmm. through doing so definitely yeah wealth is power yeah well yeah well i mean money is what a, a token of energy right and and influence at the end yeah, of the day man. yeah I mean, I don't have a lot of it, but I do what I want. Mm -hmm. If I focused on it, I could do it. It's just not a main right. focus. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I don't know. I thought I, I see like I got to bring in a good couple grand because I actually know some people in the special effects industry that want to teach me how to do these body suits. And I already got into printing. I got like five different 3D printers. <laughs> thing is these people want money to teach and i get uh -huh. it because right. i need money to teach right however i started doing it for free after getting paid mm -hmm. now bear with me one year course one thousand dollars it's not much my agent decides this annual course, we're just not going to do it. Well, normally, I take this big fucking chunk of change, and I use that to open up doors right? to make more money. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. By doing crazy shit, like building a four foot cat woman statue of some that's awesome crazy, crazy <laughs> fucking yeah that's how i do but then i i didn't get that money and mm -hmm. my teaching when life gets hard you make it harder yeah. i said you know what i'm a teacher though just because i'm not getting the money doesn't mean i'm not going to teach right this chick who was getting involved with a certain group of occultists that leave a bad taste in my mouth She's been wanting to take my course forever. I decided to say, you know what? If I really don't want you to get involved with these people, and if I really give a fuck about you as a human being, I have to take you on as a student. So I said, okay. I remember you commenting on my videos that you want to take the course. We're going to start tomorrow noon. Mm -hmm. She was ecstatic happy about it no longer speaking with these corrupted individuals that puts my head in a better place sure so that's payment that's it i was about to say that's another that's another form of payment in itself that is a token of power and influence yeah it's no different than a thousand dollars right my work has brought people off of alcohol my work has brought people off of drugs. It's transformed people's lives for the better. So I receive that payment gracefully. And I know that the doors will open up for me to do what I want to do somehow, some way, because it always does. I don't have to worry. And this right. is the thing. This is what's so ironic. I live in the Bible Belt. Everybody will hate me but I'm more like Jesus than any of these fuckers. I understand their book more than me or more than them. Right. Now, Christian doesn't Christian literally mean like Christ like 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. We're supposed to follow in his footsteps. You know, yeah. I think he was raising the dead. I think he said all these things we shall do and greater. Mm-hmm. That motherfucker was a necromancer. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> shit. Uh-huh. Uh, and even if that is just a metaphor i mean still he was working with a a current that is frowned upon and and today's and today's oh yeah of course and in that time it was frowned upon and it still is yeah yeah but i mean look at the catholic church revering dead priests as saints and i mean to me that's no different that's that's necromancy as well it is. And that's what Catholicism is, dude. That's crazy. Because I just <laughs> well, said that. I said that last year. I said Catholicism is a system of necromancy. Uh huh. I agree, one hundred percent. I've got Saint Cyprian in my hallway. I've, I've got yeah. I've got <laughs> Saint Cyprian up here on my wall. Yeah, and Saint <laughs> Saint Albert here because he was the patron saint of magicians. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Saint Cyprian Cip- right here up on my wall. Yeah. Actually, any, any, yeah, that's that's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah. and I think the word Catholic means universal. Mm-hmm. And you can sort of see that in the history of the Catholic Church of, oh, yeah, we have a God like that. Come come worship with us. Mm-hmm. Come be a part of our army and come be a part of our populace that pays taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the Vatican, for sure. It's the Vatican, and which the, is the, its own municipal jurisdiction, by the way. Yeah. Um, the, the corruption is real, but the potential for good was there. Right. Certainly. You know. And still and is. It is. Yeah. I mean, like. If you want to build hermetic armor, one of the quickest ways to do it is to recite the full rosary mm, and do it daily. Interesting. You know, do it daily. There's a book written about it. I think you could read it for free on Amazon Prime. But I think it was the occult nature of the Catholic rosary. Interesting. It might just be the occult nature of the rosary. But when I found that I read it, and when I read it, I'm like, fuck, I already knew this. Right. Yeah. You know, and the author, when they're real and they're knowledgeable, dude, that's pretty much what happens. Mm-hmm. You're like, fuck, I already knew that. Mm-hmm. It's like they're just telling you things that you have not yet formulated into words. Yeah. You know, that's where that real transmission and in, in yoga, they call it Shakti Pat. That's the real transmission of the teaching. Yes. yes. Yeah. It, it, it awakens something within you that was dormant and just needed, it needed yeah. sunlight and, and yeah. sustenance. Germinates it. Right. Ger- right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. So what, what is your, in, in your mind, the biggest um, difficulty that you've come across? You mentioned, you know, not being able to talk about these things with other people. Is there anything else that you would, consider like a great difficulty to this practice myself because i make things harder than they have to be sure philosophically that sounds terrible but in regard to evolution it's a primary integer in the equation so Difficulty doesn't exist, only learning. Sure. Opportunity, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. I like that. All right. Well, I, I think I've kept you here long enough. I appreciate the time that you've given us. I guess as a sort of final um, closing statement, what what do you look forward to in the near future in, in your practice? The art. <laughs> okay. Expressing truth through this flesh Mm -hmm. watching it manifest i hate the process (laughs) i hate the work it's like i don't want to do it but then you do it and then you see the result yes you see the information between two covers or you see the paypal account go up (laughs) because of the sales regardless regardless it's a good thing you know? right. So that's what I look forward to. I really do. It's the art, man. And the science. Right. Like I said, Payman, he's been a interesting avenue for my own cultivation of power mm-hmm. and self-expression. 
And that's why I will revere those things as principles and concepts, art and science. They are him. You know, every time I pick up a paintbrush or cut a piece of foam, I'm connecting to that spirit. Yes. Every yeah. time I, I try to look at spirituality from a scientific lens and mm -hmm. draw those lines between the subconscious mind and dark energy, you know, those things, those deep contemplations that most occultists don't have, their gifts in and of themselves. So fuck yeah, that's what I look forward to. Excellent. Well, this has been a wonderful conversation and I, I thank you so much for your time. Make sure you guys check out curtisjoseph.com. I'll put that link in the description. That's uh, one way that you can get a hold of our guest here. I wish you the very best. I wish you well. And I look forward to maybe speaking to you again in the future, maybe in a few months or a year or something, seeing oh, yeah, man. what's changed and what's stayed the same. But yeah, thanks again and be well. For sure, bro. You have a good one. Thank you so much. Take care.